Hello, everybody, and welcome to a conversation with artist Jen Carland. She is exhibiting in the seventh annual Evanston Made member group show. Hello, Jen. Hi, everybody. Thank nice you for letting us <laughs> into your world. We appreciate it so much. Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay, so tell us what it is you're exhibiting in the group show, the pop up. What do you have in the Evanston Made show? Sure, so I'm doing both the exhibit and the pop-up. So for the exhibit, I have one piece that's a small 8x10 um, abstracted map of Evanston, which is very exciting. Um, it's done in pink, like a soft um, orange and cream colors. And it's currently featured in, at Squarehouse, Squarebox Books on okay. Main Street. You've got an exhibit in the Squeezebox Books window. Okay. Yes, Squeezebox yeah. Books. I always mess up that name but yes that's where it is <laughs> nice. um and for the for the pop-up i'm doing prints so i have three pieces that particular piece i mentioned earlier the pink evanston i have an orange evanston and i have a piece of chicago so those prints can be ordered um yeah, in various sizes awesome thank you for participating in both we love that people are so involved this year um what is on your canvas right now what are you working on so I'm working on two new collections. This time at home has been really great for me because I've had so much more studio time than I normally do. So I'm working on a series of 10 um, Nashville neighborhoods. So I kind of pick cities and I focus on a few cities and do neighborhoods of each of the cities. So I've done Boston, I've done Chicago, now I'm doing Nashville. So I'm working on that. And I'm also doing a new series of uh, larger U.S. cities, such as like Las Vegas and Miami, Manhattan, places that people travel to like on vacation, you know, so they might want to remember that place with an abstracted piece of art. And what is happening different with your practice? You mentioned we, we're hearing from a lot of artists that they have so much more time. Um, is anything, is there a pivot happening at all with your practice since Shelter In? I think for me, the biggest change is I'm not at all a morning person, so I, <laughs> I much prefer like working at night, but since I've been home, I've actually been waking up early and working in the studio more in the morning because I get a lot of natural light in here in the morning. Um, so it's changed my sleeping habits a little bit, but um, otherwise I think it's been pretty productive. And how are you doing without uh, the people part? Is the shelter in lack of humans a respite, a, a, you know, a wonderful break, or is it making you really miss people? Um, I guess a little bit of both, of both. I was missing people a lot at first. It was very weird at first, but then I kind of got used to it. And I've actually found that I'm dealing with it a lot better than my boyfriend, who is a lot more introverted than I am. So it's kind of funny that like, I'm more okay with being home and just like chilling out. It's gotten me like thinking more about like intention, you know, like being really intentional about what I'm doing. And instead of just doing things on autopilot, which, you know, a lot of us do for most of our lives, we just kind of zoom through stuff. And it's so, amazing to have so much time and to just think to yourself, like, what have I done in these last 10 weeks? Like when was the last time you ever we're home for 10 weeks. It's so bizarre. I know. It's crazy. Um, but I think I've gotten a little bit healthier as well. Like, you know, cooking everything yourself and you know, going, being able to exercise a little bit more and just being more like in touch with different things, different aspects of life that when you're working all the time, you don't get a chance to do. Right. And working and commuting and all of that. Okay. So let's go back a little bit and talk about how you became an artist and how you came to map making the focus that you have. Where did that, what was the genesis for all of that? Sure. So my background is in the visual arts. I have um, both a BFA and an MFA. Um, but my MFA, both, both of my degrees are in metal sculpture. So I was doing something very, very different, you know, different. in my earlier stages of life. <laughs> um, but then I graduated my, with my MFA right as the recession happened in 2008-ish. Um, and so I ended up working for the Census Bureau for a while and really liked maps. You know, I was looking at maps a lot and was like really fascinated by maps. And so 
I went back to school for urban planning. Um, and, you know, I got my certificate in urban planning. And I found that a lot of that was dealing with policy and politics, which is not at all where I'm interested. You know, that's not my, my focus at all. So I just started drawing maps. I started, when I was in class, I started sketching out what we were talking about. And this was back in Boston. And um, I was, you know, really fascinated by the history there and just like how the cities were formed. And so I started drawing them and never thought it would turn into anything serious. You know, I was just like fun. And like, I was giving them the right as gifts and stuff. The people are like, oh, you should sell these. These are really interesting. Um, so I posted them on Etsy and, you know, went to a couple little markets and um, people really liked them and responded well to them. So I just kept going um, and it became a whole thing. So that's so cool. And are they all always abstract or are they sometimes very realistic with like very specific directions and streets? Well, they're all based on real maps. So I look at atlases while I draw. So everything is very loosely based on the real thing. So okay. I wouldn't use them as like, you know, directions or like in order to get to point A to point B or anything. But they are based on the real geography. Um, and some of them are more abstract than others. It just depends on how I'm feeling in that particular mm -hmm. moment. And what materials I'm using too. Like if I'm using watercolor or a pen and ink or something very um detail they can get a lot more precise whereas if i'm using big brush strokes or um bold colors and splatters and stuff it's a little bit more abstract fantastic i love the work and i i just love your color choices like they i'm sure they're very intentional but i never feel like oh i'm there's a purple evanston you know it's not like these simple throw together your color choices are playful and fun and interesting and i love I love the one that you have in the group show right now. Um, who is your inspiration, either current or past? Who is it that's inspiring you to make work right now? Um, well, I get inspiration from a lot of places. I think one of the artists I want to mention is Mark Bradford. Oh. I don't know if you know his work, but um, very early on in my career, I remember seeing a, a show of his um, at the ICA in Boston, just being like, blown away you know his stuff is just really amazing his textures his colors um i just really really liked his work um so he's always been a source of inspiration for me i think um ever since you know i got started and you know there's also the other big names you know like people like pablo picasso and frida kalo are two people i look to for inspiration a lot um and do you, you never dabble back in large steel sculpture? You don't go back to that ever? You know, I haven't gone back to that since I graduated because you need so much equipment. Mm -hmm. And space. And I, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've been moving, you know, I've moved several times since, you know, I finished my MFA. So I have never like had the opportunity to have a big studio where I could have like rolling mills and welding machines things like that. So um, maybe one day. I do miss it a little bit. Like I miss the act of building things. It's very different when you're just working on a flat surface. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe one day I'll get back to it. But for now, I'm just doing drawing and painting on paper and canvas. 2D is working out for you and maps are definitely working out for you. Yeah, for now, I'm pretty happy with what I'm working on. Awesome. Jen, thank you so much for your time today. And thank you for being part of the show and the pop-up. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.